Hi, I'm Shane, and I'll be talking about ways to interact with language models. So it used to be necessary to fine tune on lots of training examples in order for the model to perform well at a given task. So in this illustration taken from the GPT-3 paper on the right, the model is given thousands or even tens of thousands or more examples of English to French translations, where the model is updated to learn this task specifically in order to perform well at it. But with much larger models or models that have been tuned to follow new instructions, they generally can perform well even without fine tuning on many tasks. You just have to prompt it with the instruction or a pattern of examples for it to be able to attempt to answer the question. Whereas the joke goes, the model is now fine tuning us because it's on us to find the right prompt or a series of words that cause it to act desirably. Now a trade-off between the new paradigm of uh, prompting and the old paradigm of fine tuning is that fine tuning generally still outperforms prompting because it's specializing the model with lots of data for a particular task, but prompting doesn't require lots of training data. It just requires instruction or um, small series of examples. So let's look at a few more examples, this time um, different from uh, translation, and we're gonna look at sentiment classification. So we'll map the particular template into examples. So for a zero shot uh, prompting paradigm, there's zero examples given. It's just the instruction and the input that we want uh, the model to generate a response for. So for sentiment classification, the instruction could be is the sentiment positive or negative? Now that could be paraphrased in a number of different ways. Is the movie review positive or negative? What is the sentiment of the movie review? It doesn't matter so long as it's somewhat intuitive. And uh, then you give the model the input and then it's clear from the A colon that we now want an answer that's probably positive or negative. In a one-shot setting, um, which is giving it the model one example. There are many ways to do this. In this case, we've shown example with no instruction. So the model has to infer the pattern just from the examples, or in this case, the one example. And so here we have question, this movie rocks. The answer is positive, we give it that. But now we ask the model a question, this movie sucks, and we ask the answer. And the model should hopefully be able to intuitively see um, or generate text that follows this pattern. But the more typical way of doing a one-shot prompt is you give the instruction followed by the input and output example, and then the input. So here you can see color-coded again, is the sentiment positive or negative, the input example, output example, and then the example that we care about that we're hoping the model will make a correct um, classification or generation for. And so one shot can be general, generalized to two shot, three shot, however many few shot we want. And this is generally called a few shot paradigm. But in two shot, there's an instruction, uh, or one way to do it is there's instruction, an input output example, a different input output example, and then an input. So you can see the red is the instruction, the blue is the first input output example, and then an orange is a new input output example, this time for a negative or bad movie review, before we ask it about the, the review that we care about. And it's important to note that there are different ways of templatizing this. So it's also common to put the instruction or repeat the instruction before the orange block and before the green block. So the model sees before every input um, the instruction just to reinforce the pattern of what we uh, intend to see. And lastly, uh, one type of prompting called chain of thought prompting, which has become prominent in uh, recent months, has helped uh, specifically in the performance of particular arithmetic or verbal reasoning tasks. And the way that it works is you give the model instruction, but you also ask for it to produce a step-by-step -step explanation in the answer. And so you might say, is the sentiment positive or negative? Please explain your answer step-by-step. -step. Then the question is, this movie sucks. And then the answer, we don't just expect negative. We expect the model to say something like, the word sucks indicates the viewer did not enjoy the movie, therefore answer is negative. And by um, giving this rationale, the hypothesis is that the model um, is required to be more consistent in the way that it produces an answer. 
Now, generally a chain of thought prompts um, are done in a few shot setting, although I've only shown a zero shot setting here. So normally you would see a set of examples where the answer would have an explanation followed by the answer in each case, just so the model is very clear on what the pattern is and what's expected. So now let's talk about um, how you can get the best results from your prompts or make the best prompts for your model. So there are a lot of really intuitive ideas here that have been studied in research. One of them is um, give it more examples. So if you, in a few shot setting, just give the model one or two examples, it probably won't perform quite as well uh, for most models as if you give it many examples, like 10 or even 20, to really reinforce what's expected. It also helps uh, performance sometimes to give the model more diverse examples in a few shot setting. So examples that uh, aren't just all positive movie reviews, but some are negative, some are positive, some are ambiguous, and, and some are about different types of movies. Or you can give it examples that are specific to the input. So sometimes you can prompt the model, and if it's about a horror movie, you can give it exemplars that are all taken from other horror movies, or perhaps use similar wording to the review that you care about making a prediction for. You can also ask the model to explain or verify its answer as in chain of thought prompting. Uh, or you can try to find the best or most consistent prompt, uh, given that different wordings or paraphrases of an instruction or template styles sometimes can arbitrarily just be better because the model is, is not perfect and sometimes different wording is better. You can also try many different prompts uh, or paraphrases of the prompt um, and see which, uh, which type of answers produce more regularly. So if you prompt the model 20 times with different paraphrases of the instruction and 15 or five of the time it produces uh, an answer that the model um, or that the uh, review is positive, but 15 times it says it's negative, then you'd be more confident that the model is negative, sorry, the review is negative, than positive. And lastly, you can obviously fine tune the model further to do better on a specific prompt, or you can fine tune a prompt or find a prompt that's best for a model. And we'll look lastly at prompt tuning, which is a new paradigm of um, finding the best prompts. And so when it comes to having enough data to do some tuning, you have a number of different options. The first one in the green box, option A is to fine tune your model to work best with a specific prompt. So you need lots of examples and you're training the model to do really well with one particular wording. Now option B in the blue box is you can find the best series of words or prompt or instruction for a frozen model. So the model's unchanged, but you're finding the best prompt. And this can be done manually by trying lots of examples or it can be done using gradient descent where uh, there are techniques described more below uh, where you can try lots of different permutations and find or search for the most optimized version. And option C is where you don't necessarily need a, a series of tokens or words as a prompt, but you can find something called a soft prompt, where you actually look for the series of vectors that is ultimately what words are translated into uh, in the model. Uh, but you find a series of vectors that um, don't necessarily map to words, but when fed to the model, give it the best idea of the task or the instruction that you really implicitly mean. And if you want to read more about that, there are more resources I'd recommend below.